How you doing YouTube? Today we're back with a brand new video. So today's video is going to be um, part one of two videos. Um, it's another warm wall installation, um, which is basically what we call a uh, fitting insulated plasterboard um, to the inside of a room to improve the, the thermals um, and keep the place nice and warm. So I was saying in the, the, the last um, tool review that I've done, um, it was a circular saw. And you're going to see me here actually cut, cutting this board with the circular, circular saw. Um, so whether it's uh, the solid insulation um, without the board or any of the sizes of uh, insulated plaster board, um, I cut everything with this saw. Um, it's it's a, a game changer if if you're doing this on sort of a a weekly basis or even a, a monthly if you're doing one job a month um using this stuff um stop cutting it by hand you know the circular saw cuts through it so quickly um i have two blades i have the blade that's on it now um and it's it's just a wood blade but it it cuts it really well and then i i have a a separate blade um for cutting wood and stuff like that there um so when when we're doing the when we've we have our board cut and we're going around um uh, sockets and stuff what i'll do is i'll cut the the bottom piece of plasterboard so you can see here i'll measure from the top of the box till the floor uh leaving about a half an inch uh, um at the bottom um and then i will cut the box out of the the bottom bit of plasterboard so you'll see here so the the top of that bit of board there is along the top edge of the um the the box the electric box um the socket sorry um and then once we've got it screwed in then the bit of board that goes on top will just set and that will, will set on top and that creates uh, the top edge of the new box. Um, this is the best way I found to doing it. Um, the the other way you could do it would be get, get the client to um, get an electrician to take, um, take all the sockets off completely um, and tape up the ends uh, and then what you would do would be to put uh, one of the new uh, boxes that you get an idea is to sort of go into plasterboard um, and just put it in till the, the, the gap that you cut. Um, and then that's your new box. But I find that it doesn't work very well, number one, that them boxes are crap. Um, and a lot of times the old, uh, the old wires just aren't long enough um so b basically when i'm finished here i'll have a nicely shaped box the same shape and size as the the box before um and all the client has to do is buy longer um <clears throat> longer screws to screw the face plate on basically um and you're not making any massive changes when you're going to price these these insulated plasterboard jobs up, um, you need to check what your substrate is. So you can see here the, there's holes all across this wall, and um, some of them holes was here, were here, um, just like damage, um, from you know. I don't know, the, the, the observed before us basically. But um, when we come, we top it with a hammer. If it's solid wall, then happy days. Um, <clears throat> but this is an upstairs, so we know for a fact that it's, well, we don't know for a fact, but we're pretty sure it's not going to be damp. We check it for damp. Um, if it's not damp, then we just um, stick the boards to the wall with. Um, non-expanding foam and then we fix them with mechanical fixings afterwards um 
if the wall's damp then obviously you want to build a frame off the wall you really want to get the damp solved first but if the client doesn't want that you can either build a frame on the wall uh, with dpc or you can build a jib frame so a metal frame away from the wall um, and then you don't you don't have any anything contacting the old damp wall basically but we were lucky in this job um behind this old lane plaster so it's it's laughing plaster but instead of the um instead of them doing the external walls with uh just lame straight on till the brick they actually um uh, screwed buttons on and then they put the lathen plaster over the top of the buttons so all we have to do here is um these are three inch uh four inch screws and we're screwing through the board until the joist and you can see there behind my back there's like a a, a line of holes um that's i hit them holes with a hammer um, to find where the joists were and then that allows me to know where to screw um, where to screw the um, put the screws in basically um, so you can see here I just set this board um, on it's just a hop up um, I would like to get some saw horses eventually um, but it's hard finding decent saw horses that are sort of low, low profile um i don't have much space in my van so um if i was going to get them they would need to be sort of low profile um but yeah so i just cut these on here um uh, i'll just use my tape measure to um to cut uh, to measure the board and then we'll just cut it the size using the saw and um, you can see here the amount of dust that this is kicking up um so it's real important you can see there i have the the respirator mask on um it's really important to they actually wear that because it's really bad for your lungs and stuff um you sh even if you're just using a hand saw you should be wearing a mask because this this stuff is absolutely deadly like um yeah if you're enjoying the video I'd just like to ask you to take a chance to go and check out the links in the description um we have a buy me coffee um link we have a patreon link on the patreon you're going to get the extra videos shout outs stuff like that there and then uh we have our amazon affiliate links um all the tools that you see me using in this video and the next one um they're all going to be linked in the description um so if you want to click on on the link buy the tool i get a percentage if you don't buy that tool but you go on to buy something else i also get a percentage uh, so if you want to support me it's a good way to do it um so we'll, we'll, we'll get back this room is being fully re-skimmed but with we only are boarding um three of the walls so the window wall you can see there behind me and um, this wall and a, another small wall it, as i was saying when you're, you're you're pricing when you're pricing these jobs up you have to make sure you know what um what way you're going to be fixing these to the wall because your price is going to be massively different uh, massively different whether you're doing this screwing them till original lath and plaster or on the the other scale of the uh, price range if you're building jib frame um you know you're talking about w one costing a few bo uh, boxes of screws um and the board and at, at the other probably a thousand pound worth of jib frame um to do and then obviously all the extra work because you're building the jib frame before you you, you fasten um I, I actually prefer the, the jib frame method. Um, although it's the most expensive, it's the one that you can be sure that's gonna last the longest. Um, because you're not actually you're not actually getting any contact with um the wall. So, you know, it's it's the best option usually. Um we offer f uh, four different sizes. So there's the 37.5 overall, which is the, the board that we're using now. Um, there's a 55 
mil overall, um, a 75 mil overall, and there's another one, but I'm not quite sure. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but the the 37.5 is the the more popular um, choice. There's not there's not a massive difference. There's like eight or nine pound difference between each board. Um, the these boards cost me. I think they're like forty six pound um a board for this the thirty seven point five uh mill overall board. Um but the 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 it's it, you, you get the most for your money with this the smaller board. Obviously you're not getting as high uh a U value, but um the amount of space you're saving in your room like so the, the the fifty mil, you know, you're t you're talking about, you know, you're losing, especially in a room like this where you're doing three walls, like fifty mil off each wall. That's that's a lot of space to lose, um, and then the you 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 run into the issues also because if you go sort of over thirty seven point five, uh, if there's radiators on the wall, um, then the clan has to start moving pipes, um. The, the sockets um you you have to get the wires lengthened um and it it just adds a, a whole lot of hassle but um it's it's a good system to use inside if if you if you're if you're wanting to offer this system um to your clients and you're just not a hundred percent sure how to get started um shoot me a pm um either on instagram or facebook and i'll um I'll, I'll let you know obviously if you're you're not living in belfast i'm not going to be able to help you with where to get materials but i can let you know uh what materials you need need for what system and that sort of thing so feel free to give me a shout if you're wanting a little bit of information about it um you can see here um, this house has uh, cornicing. Um, the last warm wall system uh, video that we posted, it was um, similar to this, as in that the uh, um, the room had cornicing as well. Um, I always give the the uh, client the choice to choose whether they want me to leave the insulated board slightly shorter the insulation bead and skim or if they want me to take it right till as high as I can and sort of hide half the insulator or half the um the cornicing the this client in, uh, client in particular wanted me to just leave it short and box it off um and th to be honest with you I think it's a, a better job so what we would do is um we would bead along this top edge um and leave it just short of the the cornice and beat it and then we would skim the face and then the little return on the top of the board so we would just skim that flush until the bottom of the um cornice and, and that leaves a nice finish um it it leaves as as, as seamless as possible basically um yeah, so we we tended when we were doing these jobs, um, we tend to if we were we were doing it sort of downstairs and there was, um, there was like a, a there was like a concrete floor, a stone floor, a slate floor, whatever, we would we would keep it about a half inch up off the floor. Um, because this is upstairs and um, we're not really worried about damp getting into the boards. We're going to keep them pretty low. Um, we, we won't have them touching the ground. We'll have a, a few a few millimetre clearance. Um, we won't actually have them completely touching the ground, but um, yeah that's your your sort of your best bet you can see I, where i've marked the holes here and actually you may not be able to see it but i've above where i've marked the holes on the cornice and i have marked 
where um, the joists are here behind this wall. It's a good idea if you if you can while you're pressing the job to measure the space that you have in behind here. Um, we had, we got we I bought four four inch nails because uh, I wanted to be sure that they were going to fit the whole way through, um, and they were just slightly too long. So there's a lot of the screws put in at an angle, um, and that was just to stop the um, screw going out of the back of the wood and pushing the wood away from the wall. Um, so it's just a slight, a slight uh, angle. Um, it, it's, it's hard um, finishing around the sockets. Uh, and I'll always get a, when I'm doing the sockets, I'll always get it in the middle of a full board um, so you see now I put a full board till the right hand side there um, and then instead of putting a full board right next to it and the socket falling in between two boards I will always line the socket up in the middle of the board um, or if the socket is against the wall I'll always put it, the board in tight to the wall and it, it always be a full sheet um you see there that i've just cut it out again and the reason i do this is because it's it's too hard to cut to cut it out of two sheets um i just find it a, a lot easier to do it this way and also because if you so your your cable is either going to be coming up from the floor or down from the ceiling um and that's something that you have to keep an eye on when you're going and it's not always going to be up or down sometimes it comes sideways which is you know you're you're pretty much screwed there like there's nothing you can really do but when you take your your face plate off we always cover the face plate so we take them off and we'll cover them in plastic um once we've done that there we look at what way the cable's going so in this particular case the cables were going down the wall um so then we know directly under that socket we have to stay away um we can't try to get screws in there and if you're going to if you're going to meet two sheets together on the edge of a box um you're going to have the problem where you've nowhere to screw the edge of your board because there very likely be cables underneath there um and this actually goes for whether you're screwing like we are here or you're you're uh, putting hammer fixings in um or anything it's like one of the more common things to happen to people that aren't experienced uh, putting this insulated plasterboard on um is that they actually go through cables uh and, and it's pretty it's pretty common um if you're lucky enough you go through the cable and it knocks the electric off there and then and you know right something's obviously happened here take the last board off that you've done see that you've damaged the cable dig it out get a spark to come and fix it or if you're unlucky it doesn't trip um the fuse box is old or whatever it doesn't trip the electric and it just sits um sort of fizzling for a few weeks you've plastered you split jobs are good and um, all of a sudden the electric starts tripping because the the wires are burnt out um, and then you're back ripping walls open to try to find the mistake that you've made so it it you you a hundred percent need to be as careful as possible find your wires find get by yourself a, a wire fender I, I i see that you can't buy them I've read that they're sort of not a, they're not really that good, but, you know, <laughs> try anyway, you know. Um, I've been doing this for a long time, and, and don't get me wrong, I've had cables before. Um, i done a job for a builder, um, and I had an apprentice uh, working along with me, um, and we had about, it was, it was about six rooms to do uh two or three walls in each room um and the apprentice had four separate cables um and i actually had a cable on that job um <laughs> so 
yeah, you need to be careful. Um, you you had a cable that's going to cost you a few quid, like so, and and sort of paying your wage, and also making a profit. There's a high chance that your your profit's going to go. Um, <coughs> there's uh, also when we do these, so um, we'll give the client the choice to keep the windowsill. Um, you you lose a lot off your windowsill when you do it this way. You just cut the windowsill out of the the board. Um, so that sort of extra bit that sticks out, you'll see it, it makes it a lot smaller, but it's a choice that you have to give your client. I would have rather took the sill off, um, like in the last one that you've seen us doing, and actually put a plaster sill, you know, make a, a plaster sill. Um, that's the way I prefer to do it, but the, the client didn't want it, so... Um, you can see here also, it's a, it's a good shout. It's going to cost you about £30 extra to do. Um, well, it did in this job anyway. But you can see this, the, the no-nonsense um, carpet covering. So we obviously had to cut, cover carpet um, from where we were cutting downstairs up until this room. Um, and instead of throwing the dust sheets down and doing it that way and having to lift them because you don't want the client tripping um, overnight, obviously, because you would need to leave them down. We use this uh, carpet cover stuff, so you just roll it out. Um, and I've started actually buying an extra roll of this stuff. Um, and, inst and instead of putting my sheets down in the room, I'll put this along, so two strips of it, um, side by side, the whole way around the room uh, of every wall that's going to be skimmed. And, and what it does is it keeps, obviously, your plaster off the floor. But unlike a dust sheet, it's not going to ball up um, at the bottom of your wall. So you'll not be constantly pulling it out of the way to skim the bottom of the wall. Um, and it, it actually stops the plaster completely getting on the floor all together and when you're done all you do is peel it up and it makes your life a hundred a hundred times easier so it's a, it's a good shout if you're going to um and especially doing this insulated plaster board but really any plaster um when i finished this job when i finished skimming it took me about 35 minutes to clean up because all i had to do was lift on take all my tunes out lift this plastic push it brush it out into the hallway um because the hallway was all covered with the plastic too roll the the dust into a ball inside the plastic and then roll the ball down the stairs collecting the um carpet cover as you go and basically you're left with a big ball of carpet cover and it has all the dust and all the shade um, off your feet and you know it makes life a hundred times easier so give that a, a, a go the next time you're you're um, skimming a room especially if you're upstairs um, yeah so th there was a bit of messing about around this window you can see here the uh, cornicing comes till um, the edge of the ceiling here and then it sort of terminates until the wall um, so instead of just leaving a big square um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll screw this square in and I will cut a little triangle for that gap. You can see the this little square, you can see me cutting it now. We'll cut cut it, uh, this um, little triangle out and then that leaves just a nice finish on um, on that on that one. Um, and I, I, the last uh, job that I done with essentially the plasterboard the um the the stuff went really quick um and this this plasterboard was the exact same so i'm 100 percent sure that it's this plasterboard has been sitting for a long time um because that one was that job like three weeks ago and nobody had took any more of that insulated plasterboard when i went to get it it was the same amount on the pallet as when i got when I finished taking off the last time, so I'm ninety percent sure that nobody else is using this for whatever reason. 
Um, <clears throat> I don't actually see a whole lot of people offering this warm wall system um, <clears throat> about Belfast. But I know there's like a there's a big place over in East Belfast um, that exclusively do um, insulated plasterboard, plasterboard, jib frame. Um, so maybe that's where everybody's going uh, and not this little builder's yard that I use. But again, the builder's yard I use is a lot cheaper than everywhere else. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what else to really say. That's basically that for this job, you know. You just have to make sure you stagger your joints, um, keep your cuts straight. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. If you've enjoyed the video, uh, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. There, eighty five percent of the people that watch this video aren't subscribed to the channel. Um, we've just hit five hundred, which is five hundred subscribers, which is for, which is awesome. And and thank you to everybody. <coughs> but the people that are watching that haven't subscribed, subscribe now. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.